We will continue now with our, our introduction to Kajim. And we're learning about Nochos. And we're up to page Yud Zion on the top left column. And we're talking about a Kohen who had a schizophrenic machshava. He had a machshava on the one hand, Lishma, and on the other hand, Shalom Lishma. And we came to the conclusion that Yei Shinui Achar Shinui. And if he has a machshava of Lishma and Shalom Lishma, or Shalom Lishma and Lishma, it doesn't matter in what sequence, it will passel the mincha. And that's based on a sugi in Mesech B'Psachim, which is called Tfos Lashon Rishon. What that means is, P'Sachim Daf Nun Tesem that according to Rabbi Meir, we consider the first machshava of the Kohen. And that, if it's a machshava poseles, will disqualify the carbon. And that's called Tfos Lachan Rishon. Now we understand if he started with a machshava of Shalolishma, and then he changed his mind, contradicting himself, expressing a machshava of Lishma, then Tfos Lachan Rishon. We're not going to accept his rescinding and canceling his first machshava. However, Let's say he started with a machshava of lishma, and then he changed it to a machshava of shalol lishma. According to the logic and the rule of Rabbi Beir, we should say tefotz lachon reach on and the government should be kosher. And now we're establishing that in both directions, whether he started with a machshava of shalol lishma or even if he began with the first machshava lishma, it's possible. But the answer is as follows. Rabbi Meir only applies the principle of Tfos and Rishon within the same avoda, Like in the case of Menachos, for example, when we spoke about Shinui, Leachar Shinui, there are many different avodas. You have the avoda of Kvitsa, and then you have the avoda of Nesina Klichares, which is parallel to Kabbalah in Dam, and then you have Halacha, and then you have Akhtara. He had two different, shall we say, mutually exclusive machshavos during two different avodas. In that case, even Rabbi Meir will agree that vis-a-vis that one avoda, you have a machshava posel. So even if the first avoda was lishma, the second avoda was shalol lishma. Again, it doesn't have to be one and two, but one and four, it could be fine. In Achinami, if he would have two contradictory machshavits within the same avoda, then it would depend which machshava came first, because Rabbi Meir's principle is fos lachan richam. But we're addressing a case where he had two contradictory machshavits in two different avodos, and therefore, that avoda, which had a machshava of shalolishma, is certainly an avoda hapsula because of the machshava haposel. So, therefore, chashav, the osa avoda atzma, la sosa, gam lishma, vagam shalolishma, ha karbon kosher, if he started with a machshava of lishma and ended with shalolishma. Because Iker Daito, according to Rabbi Meir, in a contradiction between two machshavos, the Kovea, the Deterni Machshav, is the first machshav at Tvoslach and Rishon. And Rabbi Yossi disagrees. But again, Rabbi Meir would agree in two different avodos, even if he had a machshav of Lishma in the first avoda, the second avoda is a, is a separate independent unit, and it would shalo Lishma, that avoda is an avoda psu. Rabbi Yossi, on the other hand, is of the opinion that af the gemar dvarav adam nitfas. And therefore, according to Rabbi Yossi, what is kovea is not just his original machshava, but also his end machshava. Therefore, if he had a machshava of lishma and shalolishma, 
in the same avoda, the mincha is an mincha psula, because either machshava at the beginning or at the end, which is machshava poselas, will passel the korb. That's according to Rabbi Yossi, who holds af bigmar dvorov adam nitfas. And now we get to Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon holds a unique shita with regard to Shalol in Menachos. And this is a sugya at the very beginning of the Mesechta. And he says the following. Kol HaMenachos beniknitzu Shalol Shman Ksheros fi olu lebailim l'shem chova. If the Kmitza was Shalol Shma, the Mincha is Ksheira, and not only that, the Bailim have fulfilled their obligation. And the Chiddush here is that if you look at the Mishnah at the beginning of the Mesech Tzvachim, you will see that in a case of Shalol Lishma, Ein HaKorban Ola L'Shem Bailim. But Rabbi Shimon is saying that in the case of a Mincha, if the Kmitza was Shalol Lishma, not only is it a, a mincha kshera, but even the bailin have fulfilled their obligation. What is this all about? So here we have a machlokes in the Gemara itself. We'll start with the sheet of Raba. And Raba holds that Rabbi Shimon is making a barrier, a very strong distinction separating between what we call zvachim and what we call Menachos. And the Psul Shalol Shema is in Zvachim, but not in Menachos. And why is that? Because in the case of Shalol Shema, we have a problem of Heker, of whether the carbon is Nikar or Eno Nikar. And what this means is that here we have a greater issue in Zvachim than we have in Menachos. The element of Heker is undermined in Zvachim by a machshava of Shalom Shema. And the reason for that is because we have so many different types of Zvachim. We have for example, a carbon ola, and we have a carbon shlamim. How do I know that the avoda of this particular behem, of this particular zebach, is being done as an ola rather than a shlamim, or vice versa? I can only know that from the intention of the Kohen. And the Kohen announced that this is a carbon shlamim, not a carbon ola. That's shalolishma. And at this point, it's enonika. We don't know what the nature of the Zevach is until we hear it from the Kohen. When we heard it from the Kohen, now we know. And that sets up a psul of Shalol However, in the case of Menachos, the different kinds of avodos will determine, I shouldn't say determine, but will project a statement, so to speak, about what the mincha is. Every mincha has its own unique features, its own avodos. It's not like in the case of a zevach, you have four avodos that begin with shechita and end with zrika sadam in any zevach, whether it's an ola or a shlomin. But in minachos, Every mincha has its own unique individual set of avodos, and that's going to make it into nikar. I don't need the, the announcement of the Kohen as to what he has an intention for this kmitza. It's irrelevant. It's nikar me'ela by itself. Shekein b'menachos, nikar al kol mincha mincha mai. The im comets also le she mincha cheres nikar al machshavto she machshaves sheker from the avodos. Let's call it the ritual of the mincha. We see that his intention 
is Sheker. Right? He says that he did the Kmitza for another kind of Mincha, but all the Avodos were done and implemented as the original Mincha, which was designated as that Mincha. It's called Nikar Machshevas Sheker. And Machshevas Sheker, my friends, does not register on the Richter scale. The Torah, the Allah, does not recognize the Machshevas Sheker. The Eina Nechshevas Lekum, Klum, the Eina Psul. There is no Psul whatsoever, as we said. It's Ola Lebailim, L'Shem, L'Shem Chov. So in the footnote here, he gives a couple of examples. Let's say you have a Minchas Machvas, and the Kohen does the Kmitzel L'Shem Marcheches, meaning different types of baking and preparing the Mincha. Or let's say, for example, there's what's called a Mincha Blula, and there's a Mincha Chareva. There's a Mincha that has an admixture in a Shemen, and there's a Mincha that is dry. He can't tell me that he had a Kmitzel for the purpose of a mincha blula, when the mincha itself was a mincha chareva, it was a dry mincha. And the same logic applies with regard to macheshes and machas. He went ahead and he did a, ma- a minchas macheshes uh, and he claimed that he had in mind l'shem machmas, that's sheker, it's not, it's nikar shum sheker. And such a machshove doesn't register at all. Oh. But now, that's in terms of what's called Shini Kodesh. But if you recall, a week ago, we discussed another category of, of Shalol Shema, and that's what's called Shini Bailin. Now, in the case of Bailin, I have no way of knowing who the Bailin of this Mincha is. Look at the Mincha. Look at the Avodah. Can you tell me who the Bailin is? Is his name? You know, when we sent that kids to camp, you remember, we gave name tags. There's no name tag on a mincha. And therefore, it's not nika. Says Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon will concede that if there was a machsheves shalom l'shmav shini bailim, then lo ola l'bailim l'shem chov. It could not be a fulfillment. And this psul of shini bailim applies to minachos just as well as it applies to zvachim. Because there's no nikar oleh shehi machsheves shek, and all this is Rava. Now we move on to Rava. Rava says that there's a pasuk in Chumash vayikra perik vav. It says zos toras hamincha, and that pasuk tells me Torah achas lechol haminochos, which means. That ain machsheves shinu be mincha achas lechaver to poselas. So we have, according to Rava's understanding of Shimon, a separate yalfusa gzeres hakosim zot toras mincha to establish that a machsheves shinu from one mincha to another mincha does not passel the curb. And if I can reformulate in my own words, if you allow me, Rava's principle, we strip the mincha of its unique individual personality. It becomes a generic mincha. There's an element of mincha that combines and integrates all the minachas into one entity called a carbon mincha. And that's what the Torah means when it says, zos toras ha-mincha. And we're not differentiating between this mincha or that mincha. This is blula, this is chareva, this is marcheshes, this is machvas. Forget it. It's all the same. There's one unifying, shall I say, unity of minachos. If we strip the minachos of their unique dimensions, we have one basic common Mincha to all minachas. And that's derived from the Pasuk, Zos Torah Mincha. So what difference does it make if he has in mind a different mincha? They're all the same. They're all one mincha. That's Rav's take on Rabbi Shimon.
ein machsheves shelo lishma poseles b'menachos because of the pasuk zos toras hamincha. Now, here's the case that we want to put on the table. The coin is doing a kmitza on a mincha, and he makes a ridiculous statement that he has in mind that this is not a mincha at all. Call it a zeva, but not a mincha. According to Rava, that Reb Shimon's halach of Ein Machsheves Shalolishma Poselis, but Menach is based on the Pasuk of Zos Torah Samminch. Okay, within the realm and the constellation of Menachos, you can extract a universal element of Menachos. But from a Mincha to a Zemach, those are two different worlds. There's no Pasuk that says Zos Torah Samminchah Vizemach, as if to combine them, we can never combine them. Too. And therefore, even Rab Shimon would agree. Then in this case, Kamatz Mincha L'Shem Zevach, Psula, it's possible. And why? Because in this case, you cannot apply the principle of Zos, Toras, Hamincha. Now, if we go back for a moment to Rabba's take, his perspective on Rabbi Shimon, that Sheker is Nikar, it's Eno Klum, here too. He's doing an avodah, many avodahs, four avodahs on the mincha. There's no zevach over here. Is nikar shu meshaker, and therefore there be no psul. Rav, on the other hand, says that Reb Shim would be moda that's psul. That's because you cannot apply the principle of zos Torah ha mincha in the case. He has in mind that the kmitz of the mincha is him. Okay, now we get to Rav Ashi. Lo hichshir Rabbi Shimon el bekomet machvas hashem archeshet she ain't kavanos she yochel ba shem mincha cheres el kavanoso she. Machvas zu he mafe shel marcheshes. The coin basically made a ridiculous error. Again, I I love my coinim and I respect them. But with all the with all their admiration that I have, I still have to say that this particular coin did something that's ridiculous. He came to the conclusion in his mind that a machvas is a mafe, meaning that to same to the same extent you could take solace and put it into an oven and you get what's called mafe. You can put it on a frying pan. Again, you have to know all the conditions here and so forth, but it looks like a mafia. So when he made a statement that he's being comates the machvas l'shem marcheshes, he thought that a machvas is a marcheshes, even though marcheshes is baked. But he understood that machvas, which is a kind of frying, is also like baking. This is a ridiculous mistake on his part. Kavanoso shemachva zu he mafe shel marcheshes. So when he took a machvas and he said l'shem marcheshes, he really meant it. In his own mind, he thought that a machvas is a marcheshes. The divrei ruach bialma. Ruach means it's a lot of hot air. It means it's a ridiculous mistake. I will mow the Reb Shimon. Im omer lo im omer al machvas 
שתהא מנחס מרחשס, הרי היא פסול. So that basically we could summarize this sugi by saying that Rav Ashi bridges the gap, or shall I say, shortens the gap between Rav Shimon and the Chachamim. The only machlokas will be in a case where Rav Shimon wants to be machshir because he had the most ridiculous machshava here, confusing a machlas with the machetches. But as a universal rule, Rav Shimon agrees that even in Menachos, there's a psal of Shalom Lishma. And then we have Rabba and Rav. Whereas Rabba has an understanding that Nikar, and therefore whatever Machshava he has, it's Nikar Shu Sheker, and Sheker doesn't register. Or Rav Shita, that is based on a pasuk of Zos Torahs HaMincha, in which we could extrapolate one X, we'll call it, one dimension which is universal, which is common to all Menachos, and therefore a Shini from one Mincha to another would not be a Machshava Poseles. And in contrast, if he would have a machshav of mincha l'kshem zevach, I cannot apply the principle of zot taras on mincha, and therefore even Rav Shimon would concede that the mincha is so That's according to the Rav. Now, when we talk about kamitza shalol l'kshma, and we apply it to minachas in general, it has a very specific application to what's called the minchas ha-omer, which we're going to study about now. Minchas ha'omer shenik mitza shelo l'shma l'das rav psulo legami mishum shelo ba'al lechaper kishar menachos elo ba'al hapirus achodesh umiachas sheina olo l'shem chova eno mati rosa. And if it's eno mati rosa, it's psulo shekain lo matzinu carbon sheina olo l'shem chova. So Rabosai now is studying the Shita of Rav in the case of a Kmitza of an Omer Shalolishma. And Rav says the following Omer is fundamentally different than all other menachas. You can take all menachas and put them on one side of the scale and omer on the other. Every mincha, other than the omer, has as its goal kapara. In that sense, it is like zvachim. The exception to that rule is the omer. The Omer is not coming for a kapora. Its purpose is not to atone for any sin. We're not talking about any sin whatsoever. The purpose of the Omer is to be matir chadash. And this year's new crop remains prohibited unless you bring the Omer to be matir chadash and make it into Yosh. I mean, today we don't have the Omer, but we have Tezayim Benisan, which is the calendar date for the Omer, and that's enough to be Matir Chadash. So even if you're in Skoki Yeshiv in Chicago, you will still eat Yashan after Tezayim Benisan, even though they didn't bring the Omer in the Beis Hamigdash. So the, the critical, or shall we say, the classification of Omer in contrast to all other Menachas is. X, it's not a machaper, but Y, it is a mati. Oh, what's the implication as far as mita shalolishma in the case of Minchas Om? Is Rav. We have halacha that 
a carbon that's brought to Lishma is Eno Ola Labailim Lishem Chova. And what that means is that although there's an essential kiyum of carbon, but there's no kiyum of that specific carbon, and it will not apply, um, it will not achieve its goal because the machshava was shalolishma. In the cases of other carbonos, shalolishma simply means that the achievement of the carbon cannot be achieved, meaning the kapara, but the carbon per se is kosher. But when we get to Minchas Omer, there is no kapara. And therefore we can reduce the Omer to one purpose and one purpose only. It's a matir. It's exclusively for the purpose of being matir chadash and making it into yasha. So now, what are you going to tell me? That he was he did a kmitza shalol shema in the minchas haomer and let it be a carbon kosher. Why? In the case of zvachim, where the purpose of the zevach is kapara, I have a right to separate and say that in shalol shema, albeit he doesn't achieve the kapara, but the carbon itself is kosher. But in the case of Minchas Homer, you cannot make that separation. There is no kapara element. It's purely the mitzvah of the Omer. And if he had a machshav of Shalol Shema, he completely undermined the Minchas Omer. And we cannot say, well, it's kosher, but ain't ola bailum l'shem chovu. We're not dealing with a chovu at all. We're dealing with a matu. And therefore, the mincha is completely psula, according to Rav. Now, again, if you would have a classic mincha, not the mincha sa omer then what you have is a carbon that's machape. So if you have a carbon of machape, you can talk about shalol shma. it's not ola labaylam l'shem chovo, but yes, the carbon is kosher. But not in the case of the carbon whose very essence is to be mati. So that's Ra. Then we get to Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish says that Mincha sa Omer she Nikmit to Shalol Shema Kshera. Kishar Minchos she Nikmit to Shalol Shema. So basically, the way I understand it is that Reish Lakish rejects the whole structure of Rav. What do I mean? He's willing to say that Minchas Omer in Shalol Shema is basically like any Minchas Shalol Shema. Any mincha shalol shema is kosher, but in a ola bayel l'shem chovu, which means that minachos no less than zvachim have these two dimensions, and even if he cannot fulfill his obligation because he cannot achieve the machaper 
in a case of a mincha shalom lishma, the mincha per se is mincha kshera. The fact that the coin had the wrong machshava doesn't pass on the gufa shal karma or the gufa shal mincha. Why don't we equate mincha saomer with any other mincha? The mincha per se is kshera. Will it accomplish its goal in a case of machshava shalom lishma? Will it be matir chadosh? The answer is no. But don't tell me, says Rachel Akash to Rav, that the mincha per se is psula. Rav says, well, if, if it doesn't accomplish its goal, it's a matir, it's gone. It's off the radar screen. It doesn't have any significance or any meaning. It's psula again. And Rachel Akash turns around to Rav and he says, wait a minute, why is that any different than any mincha that was shalol Where you agree with me that the mincha is kshera, even though the achievement of the goal of the mincha, namely uh, the kapar of the mincha is impossible because of the shalol shema. So it means when the kapara element, the purpose of the mincha, the goal, is removed, it still remains a mincha kshera. And we should apply that, says Reish Lakish, just as well to the case of mincha saomer, because even though in mincha saomer all you have is a matir, you don't have a kapara element. But wait a minute. In mincha in general, mincha, general mincha, shalom lishma. Okay, you agree that it cannot be ola lebailam b'shem chova. You strip the mincha of its kapara element, but you didn't passel the mincha. Why should you be more strict and passel the mincha according to you, Rav, in the case of a minchas haomer? Mincha Salman, no less than any other Mincha, has that basic element of a heft of a karma. Shalol Shema negates the element of Bailin, also the Bailin Shem Chobar, meaning the Matir element. But it doesn't mean that if the Mincha is completely bereft and stripped of any meaning whatsoever. Now, the third Shita which perhaps is the most challenging of all, is that of Rava. But I would like to leave Rava for tomorrow because that'll give us an opportunity to review what we did today, Rav and Rich Lokish, and then move on to Rava.